I may have found something that's better for research than ChatGPT. It's called Perplexity, perplexity.ai. And the reason I think it may be better is because it has access to a load of different sources. That makes your information completely up to date. So you can see here, it's got a very similar layout to ChatGPT, um, but under here, we can see that it draws from the internet, from academic sources, from Wolfram Alpha, from YouTube, Reddit, and news. Okay, on the front of it, it doesn't look too different apart from these buttons. We've got this drop-down menu here, which is quick, quick and concise answers, and enhanced. Enhanced is what they use um, with GPT-4. So it should be just as powerful as ChatGPT plus the stuff that you pay for. This, however, is free. So let's go on to Enhanced. Let's ask it for the latest papers on organic photovoltaic devices. Let's see what it comes up with. Now, the one thing I like about this is not only does it give you the uh, result, but it also gives you related questions and references. In chat GPT-4, there were some potentially made up references, definitely in GPT-3 model, but in 4, there was some blurry edges that we weren't quite sure whether or not they were real, if they existed, or if the DOI was actually the right DOI. But here, we have got not only the latest papers, but we've also got the references from Semantic Scholar and whatever this one is. Let's click on it and have a look. So here, this is from the National Library of Medicine. Let's try again. So give me papers from the last year in the field of organic photovoltaics. If this is truly going to be useful for us, it needs to be able to access the recent literature, something that ChatGPT4 does not do. So we can see we've got 2021. Um, let's say 2017, 2021. Please note the second paper is 2017, but it provides valuable context. Okay, so at least it's trying to help us. There's a couple of things I like about this as well as you can go back and view the sources and you can add more sources, but also you can edit your query. If it's not quite what you wanted, you can go back and uh, have a look to see if you can change the query without having to sort of like start a new stream or sort of, uh, you know, go underneath the previously wrongly answered question. So I do like that sort of stuff. The great thing about Perplexity is that it has got an iPhone application and it's got something coming for Android at the moment. For um, anyone accessing ChatGPT on their phones, it uh, is a little bit clunky because you have to use the web interface. But with a dedicated app, perplexity.ai may just make it that little bit more seamless as you're you know, in the lab doing research and you just want to look something up quickly. You don't have to plug in information, um, but it doesn't sort of like read PDFs as well as I was hoping. There is a browser extension, but you can see that on one of my papers, if I click the browser extension and say summarize, it doesn't really do anything. The search result is empty and no information is able to provide an answer. So it means that we still have to copy and paste information from the papers into the model to get those responses. There are sort of different ways you can get it with chat PDF um, and also Hey GPT, which is my personal favorite, something I've paid for. Um, but you can see that there's still a few areas, a blind spots if you want, for academics. But let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of perplexity and chat GPT. I've got here a simple prompt and it says, act as a scientist and create an outline for a literature review about organic photovoltaic devices. That's my area, but feel free to try it with your own um, field. The first thing I've noticed is that ChatGPT has a much more in-depth and long-form content generation for this. It is something that's invaluable if you just want to take the grunt work away from you know, your mind so that you can actually focus on the details. And here you can see it's produced quite an in-depth summary that we could go through and look at. Whereas over here, it's much shorter, I would say probably about a third of what ChatGPT put out, but importantly, it's given me references down the bottom. Now, how useful they'll be are right now, I'm not quite sure, but you can see that here, it's actually tried its best to kind of plug them in. 
I'm not sure that the references are completely useful at the moment from Perplexity AI, but it's useful to be able to see where it's getting its information from, something that's just a little bit of a black box from ChatGPT4. I think this is a win to ChatGPT. Let's try another one. Let's say you don't understand a concept, you just need someone to explain it to you. Let's have a look to see what Perplexity does if I just ask it, what up conversion is for organic photovoltaic devices. And I'll do exactly the same thing with GPT-4 in chat GPT+. So many GPTs. Okay, let's have a look to see what happens. Once again, chat GPT plus is given us a much longer in-depth response, something that may be useful, however, Perplexity.ai has given us actual references for us to go and have a look at where they're getting the information from. So I think once again, it could be a little bit of like a win for ChatGPT because it just gives me the information, but it's also kind of a win for perplexity because it is providing its references. Now, I think as a scientist, I would actually still prefer ChatGPT, but perplexity has its place when you want those references. Overall, perplexity AI could be something that is invaluable to a normal sort of research environment. Getting academic references is just such a pain, going to find them, whereas Perplexity is trying to make that a little bit easier. Now, the thing about ChatGPT is that at the moment, it's just completely text. It doesn't search the internet, although it was teased at one point, and it does not read PDFs, but there are people building layers on top of ChatGPT that allow you to access those things. One of my favorites is Hey GPT, and I've talked about how I've bought this in the past. It's fantastic. So over here, you can chat with websites, chat with files, and it's got Wolfram Alpha coming soon. So this is a one-off payment, um, and you do have to use your own API key, and it can get very expensive. So here, I've been given access to ChatGPT4, um, as an API, which means I can run it in something like HeyGPT, but most people will only be able to access the 3.5, which is much less uh, expensive and much more affordable. You'll see that if I go back to um, chatting with my documents, so here you can see I'm chatting with one of my files, and that file is one of my papers, planar silver nanowire carbon nanotube, blah, blah, blah. You can see that if I uh, use that, Oh, chat with files, this one, apply. So I've asked it to summarize this paper for me in five dot points. Chat GPT-4 is much slower, so it's writing out, it's very slow, but you'll see that it's actually quite an expensive way of talking to documents. You can do it much more cost-effectively using Chat GPT 3.5. Now we can see it's only cost us about eight cents for that query. However, if you do this time and time again, it soon adds up. You can save money by using Chat GPT 3.5 model, but overall, I prefer GPT-4 because the answers are just so much better and it's worth the little bit of extra expense um, to get really good answers. And that's how I can use HeyGPT for accessing different uh, PDF files and getting the information and chatting with those documents. Now, I do know that ChatGPT is working on plugins. Once they are released to the world, I really feel like these other companies like Perplexity AI and also other companies that are building on top of ChatGPT like HeyGPT are going to struggle. They're going to have to now compete with uh, a whole new functionality that will just open up chat GPT to so many different applications, the internet and more. So there we have it. There's everything I think you need to know about the current state of AI tools for research. There are competitors to chat GPT that are getting better and better. However, people are building on top of chat GPT and including things like reading uh, PDFs, websites, asking Google. And I think that is gonna be such an awesome thing for researchers just to make things so much more sort of smooth when you just want to grab that reference or get something from a PDF that you don't want to read. All of the 
these new capabilities are going to really benefit researchers and you need to keep on top of them. So let me know in the comments what you would add. And also remember, there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, the podcast I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So go sign up now. And also remember to head over to Academy academiainsider.com. That's my new project where I've got my eBooks and my resource packs, as well as my blog and the Insider Forum. It's all going off over there. So remember to go check it out because it's all there to make sure your research and your PhD works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.